So this is the first of a video series to look at making cider. Um, I'm not a professional cider maker. This is my first go. So uh, I have a bit of experience with beer and wine making. So we're going to see uh, how it all works. I quite like all the, the science of it, to be honest. So we started off with a whole load of, um, of apples. So we've got some sweet apples, some sour apples, just from a, a friend's tree. And uh, basically we, we cut them a little bit, put them in here. It's called a scratter. You can see the little teeth. But going close, you would not want to get your fingers in there. Um, <clears throat> clearly, it goes one way, which is that way. So you run them through the scratter once. You're going to need a big tub. And actually, I just put them into this tub here. That's once. Then I tip them from there into this little flexible plastic tub, just because I had it. So in there. And then we put them back in the scratter. One of the tips I'll give you is... When you put them in the second time, get a, get a jug, a glass jug, and then tip them in one jug at a time slowly because they actually fall and catch much quicker. So there's a, there's a little tip. When they've gone through twice, we then go to our crusher. Now, my advice is buy one as big as you can afford. I just bought one as big as I could fit in the garage. Um, I should have bought a bigger one, really. But there we are. Now it's got a net, a little muslin net in the middle. Um, or this one, I think, has got a bit of polypropylene in but it seems to work quite nicely all the apples get pushed in there then you just fold the edges over to make a little bag effectively clearly then it's a process of two halves of hardwood go on top and um, you might then put some blocks now what I did is I pre-cut quite a few you can buy these but I just made out of some old really dense uh, softwood actually some extra bits so they go across like this so you put as many of those over as you can top block on plastic washer i put a bit of oil on top this obviously this cast iron part spins on and uh, presses down <clears throat> and then you've got this metal rod that you insert now you need plenty of space to do it and what you also need to do is screw in your feet onto a table. If you do not have a table like this, you might as well forget it. You must have something that's really solid so that when you start to turn this and you have to put on a lot of pressure, it's not gonna rotate. I tend to hold it with my hand, this, this one, as I push this way to give it a counterbalancing weight. All the juice obviously comes out here. Sounds silly, but that is an essential item. If you do not have a funnel, it's gonna drip everywhere. So a little funnel. I've just got a food grade, it was from Dionys Water, food grade plastic tub to collect the juice. And we ended up with about this much from a whole, a whole bootload in my Saab um, of apples. Okay. And then we were on to effectively then the stage where then it went into this uh, five gallon tub. We were up to about here and then I topped up with a kilogram of sugar and... I added some fresh water as well because we're going to lose volume all the time so I wanted just a standard measurement as well to to go from and then what I did last night is I adjusted for um, because there was it's got a pH of about three using my pH probe um, just dipped it in tested the pH that tells you how many Camden tablets you need um, and the Camden tablets killed off the yeast well they're still killing it off so basically that yeast should die over the next sort of 10 hours and this evening I'm going to pitch in the champagne yeast. I also added in sugar and I used the refractometer which I um, can show you later um, and the refractometer is really cool because it shows you what specific gravity effectively your um, sugar solution is. That tells you how much alcohol you're going to get. If you're not going to get enough alcohol then the cider won't survive or the beer or the wine so what you need to do is boost it with a bit of sugar. That's unfortunate if you don't have enough flavour, but these apples are quite flavoursome, so adding a bit of sugar in shouldn't make a big difference. So um, have a look at video two and I'll show you what's, what's happening next. 